What's up everybody? For those who don't know me, my name's Sarah. Um, two things I really like in life are guns and putting things together, building things. So it just comes natural that since I like guns, I like to put them together, I like to take them apart. Um, I've successfully built a number of AR-15s and AR-10. They're all really successful shooters. Today I want to build or finish building an AR-9 that I've been working on for a little while. It's taken me a while to collect the parts for it because um, they're not exactly cheap and I've just waited until the parts go on sale. Finally have all the parts I need to finish it and I'm super stoked to show you guys um, just putting the finishing touches on it. So far what I have left to do is install the barrel, the barrel nut, handguard, muzzle device, and the optic. And that's it. We're going to test shoot it and see if it, it runs smoothly. If it's not, I have a few ideas of um, what I will change, but we'll see how it shoots and we'll see how this goes. If anybody is just curious to uh, see what it's like to piece together an AR-9 build, uh, feel free to watch. That's what this is about. Um, or if anybody just wants to see a girl put on a barrel nut and tighten it up and that's it, feel free to watch. Okay, I'm just gonna show you guys real quick what parts I incorporated in this AR-9 build. First off, as you can see, it's a pistol. This is a, I, I think it's a four inch ballistic advantage uh, barrel, nine millimeter. I got a gun tech nine millimeter compensator muzzle device. Four inch handguard. This is a SBR tactical pistol stabilizing brace and it is 100% legal. All right, so here we got the Spikes Tactical Lower. This is nine millimeter specific. This is a last round bolt hole to open. That's just a fancy thing that means that when you fire the last round in the magazine, the bolt stays open, so it's pretty damn obvious. And um, this is a Spikes Tactical Upper Receiver. Okay, so the next thing I need to do in this build process is the barrel comes in here like this. You got a little notch that holds the barrel in place on your upper receiver. And you need to take your barrel nut, and mine came with the handguard, and it's tucked in here. This is your barrel nut. You've got to unscrew these um, little screws that clamp down tight on the barrel nut to hold it in place. And then your barrel nut is gonna screw down here. Now there's a very specific way that you have to tighten that barrel nut so that it is on with the correct torque. Um, and we'll go over that in a little bit. And then you've got to tighten your, um, your muzzle device on. So we'll be doing that. And then last but not least, the hand guard's gonna slide over top, and tighten down there. Okay, so I'm just going to unscrew these two screws right here and get the barrel nut out of the hand guard that it came with. Okay, here's the barrel nut. Before you tighten your barrel nut down onto your barrel, what you wanna do to avoid further hassle is you wanna take a little bit of grease and grease the outside of your barrel, of your chamber here, and before you slide it in. And as you can see right here, there's a little notch where that bead on the barrel sits, okay? Now with the pistol build being an AR-9, it's a blowback system. And what that means in girl terms is that you don't have any gas going through a tube to blow the, uh, the bolt backwards. It's simply the gases in the combustion um, of the bullet firing that blow it back, that blow the bolt back. You don't need a gas tube Okay, so the next step is I need to put my barrel nut on here and screw it down like that. But before I do, I wanna show you guys, here's how the barrel nut fits on the hand guard. And if you can see, it has these points of contact. And I think I would like to have it timed so that it's even and not twisted. So, I want it to be perfectly symmetrical to disperse force evenly. I'm not entirely sure that it matters, but you can see here's a flat edge, here's a flat edge, here's a flat edge, here's a flat edge. And so I think it'll have um, 
better contact if I get it squared up perfectly just like that as opposed to twisted a little bit and crooked. So I'm gonna try to time it when it's all tightened down to the correct torque that this is what it's going to look like. Now that might be a little bit difficult, um, but we're gonna use some timing shims and it'll probably take a couple tries, that's how it always works, but we're gonna try to get it aligned perfectly. The next thing I'm gonna do is unpin the upper from the lower receiver. These pins are a little stiff right now because they haven't been broken in. Take my upper and lower apart. Gotta get the bolt out along with the charging handle. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my stripped upper receiver and I'm gonna put it in a vise block. And what this does is it gives you a way to clamp down your upper receiver without, um, and this is gonna sit in your vise just like this. And what that does is when you're twisting with a whole lot of force to tighten that barrel nut down here, uh, it keeps even pressure on your upper receiver to keep it from getting bent and um, warped out of shape. And actually, there's even a little pit piece that fits in there inside the upper receiver. It's just a plastic support piece to even um, further protect it from getting any sort of bend in it when you're putting down pressure to tighten it up. Now, one thing I've learned is that I put masking tape all around my upper receivers before I put them in the vise block and before I tighten down on them because um, it'll damage the finish. When you put that in the vise block and you're tightening down, there's gonna be so much pressure on it that it'll just mar the surface. So what I do is I take some masking tape and I wrap it up real good and that protects the finish. So I have it taped up. I've got it in the vise block and I'm gonna take it out to the vise. Next step is I have my upper receiver in the vise block, tightened down in the vise and I have put my barrel nut on and tightened it down. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna take your armorer's wrench and your torque wrench and make sure that they are perpendicular to each other. So a 90 degree angle, and that ensures that you have, uh, when you go to tighten that down, it ensures that you have equal transfer of force. So when it's at 90 degrees, Whatever your torque wrench setting is, that's the force applied to your barrel nut. You want between 30 and 80 foot pounds of force, so I go right around the middle, about 50 is what I set my torque wrench to, and I already did that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten this barrel nut down. Now the proper technique that I've learned is you tighten it down once, unscrew it again, tighten it down again, unscrew it, and then tighten it down a third time. The reason why that we do the three times tighten, loosen, tighten, loosen, tighten, is those threads are getting very gently stretched and we wanna stretch them to the maximum while maintaining tightness. So when you stretch it the first time and then loosen it, you're pre-stretching them and then the third time is when you really get it tight and that's at, um, like I said, I'm doing 50 foot-pounds of torque. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, I've tightened down my barrel nut and the problem that I expected would what would happen was that the barrel nut would not be perfectly aligned and it's not. It's a little too far that way so that whenever I put my hand guard on, it would not be perfectly straight. So I have some shims here. I'm gonna take the barrel nut back off after I did all that work, that's okay. And I'm gonna start adding one shim at a time between the barrel nut and the receiver to try to time it and shim it so that it's perfectly straight on there. Put one of these shims, they come in different thicknesses, but um, we're just gonna try this one to give it a little different distance when you rethread it. And hopefully when I tighten it down again, it will be lined up properly. Got the barrel nut on. It actually took three shims to get it perfectly straight. 
but I'm happy with that because then I know that the handguard is going to line up there really well and be super snug and secure instead of being off center a little bit and potentially slip. Now that we have the barrel nut on, we're going to install the muzzle device. Now this is a compensator style, so these three holes have to be on top and it's got to be lined up perfectly. It came with a crush washer, which you want to make sure that the narrow end is facing your barrel and the wide end is facing your device. You also want to make sure that when you put it on, it is lined up perfectly centered with the barrel and the device because it has a tendency to be able to wiggle around and you don't want that. You want to make sure you hold it dead center. Some more masking tape. And we're going to tape around. This is where your wrench is going to go, those two flat sides. We don't want the muzzle device to get marred up, the surface to get scratched up, because that'll look like shit. What you want to do is make sure that you get that, once you feel that crush washer start to give, you want to make sure that you, in less than one revolution, get those three dots to line up perfectly on top. So mine's pretty tight right now. I know that the crush washer is going to start to deform right here. My dots are on bottom, so I've got half a turn to get them on top. And here they're almost on top, but I'm going to go pretty slow. Okay, next step is slide your hand guard over the barrel nut. And you put those screws that we took out earlier, put those back in and tighten them down. To finish this build up, we're going to pin on the lower receiver. Put your bolt in, and then you can put your rear takedown pin in. Yeah, yeah, I know you love the way I'm looking in my jeans. You wish that you could hold that. I know you love the way my body's sitting up. Yeah, there's a reason I walk like this. I Truth.